Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain He's a brainless, heartless coward with no power It's just another trick of his, he ain't no whiz, so don't feed his fire Jump in my balloon, I'll take you higher Take you somewhere over the rainbow Get your ticket to the show, heels click and here we go Cause you already know, there's no place like Welcome to the greatest YouTube channel on earth. That is a reference to a circus thing. That's not me being conceited. Anyway, welcome to my new video. This is a Ringmaster DIY no sew project. And the first thing we gotta do is we have to look at inspiration. You have to know how you want your jacket to look. So I ended up getting this jacket from Amazon and I sketched out what I wanted to look like um, on a sketch pad. And I kind of used these images for inspiration there was you know just like a couple of generic ringmasters and then also a costume that i saw that i really liked um and i didn't end up ordering the costume because all the fits said that it would be just way too small so i decided not to do that and to make my own and of course i would be lying if i didn't say that i kind of got this idea after the look what you made me do music video i know predictable you know me well but that's the truth so we're gonna be making this costume all right, so for this DIY, you're going to need um, quite a few things. This is a little bit more advanced, but I promise it's not too hard. So what you're going to need is some black sequin fabric, preferably one that has a little bit of space in between the sequins, so not a full sequin fabric. Um, you're going to need gold trim, a shoulder pad. Um, you're going to need probably some pins and some safety pins just to put some things in place. You're going to need gold trim, gold thread, just in case you need to sew something. There is no sewing in this particular project, but just in case. Um, and then we have a sewing kit in case we need it and then some iron on hem tape we didn't end up using it but you might need it and then some black and white striped fabric and then we also had a glue gun that we forgot to put in the shot but that is what you're going to need you are also about to see mostly my mom's hands because she actually helped me to construct this largely so what you're going to do is you're going to put your black fabric onto your lapel whatever shaped lapel you have you just want to cut your fabric to size and basically you want to start hot gluing and tucking it around your particular um lapel size so you can see here that we're putting it on the back of this lapel and um, securing it down and then we're actually going to be just cutting holes in order to get the button through but first you're just going to want to kind of trim in place and trim in place and trim in place um, and then in order to get the buttons to come through we just cut little slits and then poked the um actual button through so we didn't take the buttons off and put them back on and it ended up being really easy just make sure you're pulling the fabric pretty taut when you're doing this so that you don't get wrinkles in your fabric but as you can see pretty easy you just clip it and then stick your button through um, and then in order to keep the bulk off the back we just keep tucking and trimming and tucking and trimming so you do a line of glue you put the um, fabric back behind the lapel and make sure it's secure for this particular lapel since it's kind of an interesting shape we did our best to kind of maneuver the fabric so that it followed the curve and the points of the fabric because um, we really liked the um, structural like integrity of this particular jacket so we wanted to try to make sure that we did that as best as possible Again, here's a close-up of just cutting a small slit into the jacket and then pushing the button through. It's really easy. You might have to kind of um, maneuver the buttonhole a little bit. But in order to keep the end of this in, again, the correct shape, we're just tucking and laying it down. And remember, you can always trim off. It's a lot harder to add. So kind of start with more fabric than you think you need and then trim as you go along. So that is the last button and we ended up actually gluing the end of this um, section down because it was a little floppy from the fabric being a little heavy. So just do whatever works best for your jacket. So you can see we're kind of um, making sure that that point is there as well and then we are trimming off the extra fabric. 
Yep, so you can see we're just gluing and making sure that we follow the structural integrity of this particular jacket. You could do this easily with a normal blazer, um, but we I just found this one and thought the shape was really great. So we just wanted to make sure we kept it as close to the original shape as possible and it really wasn't hard at all to cover this side of the lapel. And then again, here at the top, since this has a kind of strange curve, we are again just covering it the best we can. Kind of think of it as like wrapping a Christmas present or something or a birthday present. Um, just getting around those odd corners, just tucking and gluing and tucking and gluing as many times as you can. If you can hear a jingle in the background, it's because my dog is right here with us. <laughs> Hello, Ryder. trimming off the extra fabric again just to keep the general shape of the lapel it's really not that difficult it just is a little bit time consuming and tedious but really is worth the time so these are my mom's hands say hello to my mom and thank her for being wonderful and helping me out with this jacket I definitely designed it and my mom was the um, construction fiend it was a very like project runway two person kind of thing um, now we are gluing down the um, fabric towards the zipper this gets a little bit tricky because you don't want to get the glue into the zipper or the fabric into the zipper so just be really careful when you're laying this down go in little sections at a time and make sure that you are keeping it just enough away from the zipper so that it doesn't get caught so you can see we're pretty tight there and um, then we're just trimming off any extra fabric again this is pretty easy it just might be a little bit difficult to um, do this you know just as terms of it being a little bit meticulous and a little bit tedious to do but it ends up looking great so keep at it and just make sure that you don't get caught in your zipper the next thing we're doing is going in with this gold trim you want to be sure to put a piece of tape on the end of the trim as I was showing there so that it doesn't fray and this is really really simple and self-explanatory just go around the perimeter of your lapel so this is a great detail I think this really makes the costume look more authentic and a little bit more like you took some time to do it so even if you already have a red blazer that has a black lapel just go ahead and add some trim it really helps so you can see we're taping off the end here again this just helps it to keep it from fraying you can cut this off once you glue it down but we highly recommend doing this so you don't have like unraveled cord all over the place and this is actually just a Christmas cord so it's really cheap really easy and we ended up using the entire roll but like three inches <laughs> so this is really great again your glue gun is your best friend have tons of glue on hand it'll help you so the next thing we're doing is going into the collar we have this piece of fabric that's actually a trick-or-treat bag because we had a hard time finding black and white fabric but it ended up working fine um, and you're just going to put a line of glue around the bottom and we kind of hemmed it so that you wouldn't see the fraying edges of it so we're just following the again whatever shape lapel you know like collar you have go with that and then just cut your fabric so that you can fold it over we did a little bit thinner piece this time because we found that it was easier to do it this way um, and then we ended up just covering the inside edge so you can see we flipped it over and then we are actually gluing um, around again the structural integrity of the jacket for this particular one was what we wanted to keep so we kind of rounded the corner of the collar and then we covered up um, we well we folded over and glued and then covered up the back end somehow I didn't film us actually sticking this down and I don't know how that happened so you'll see the finished product in just a second so you just want to cover that up and then it looks amazing and then we're going to do the same thing to the cuff so the cuff is super easy just fold up however much you want of the cuff um, but make sure when you're gluing down the cuff that you're leaving it pretty loose so that you don't accidentally like squeeze yourself <laughs> into your sleeve you still want it to be comfortable so we left it a little bit loose and you can see a little bit like wrinkled so that it had some room to stretch and then we just glued it again this hot glue gun is your best friend it is so easy and then it ends up looking really really great so it just looks like you folded it over and that that's the fabric on the inside you can see how that is looking so now we're going to do the shoulder pad and the shoulder pad is pretty much just a shoulder pad that we got from Michaels and we just covered it in black fabric. So just cover it however works best, but you want to make sure that all of the seams and glue go underneath the shoulder pad because you're going to put this on your shoulder and it's going to be showing. So you want to put all of the stuff underneath the concave of the um, actual shoulder pad. So just cover it however works for you 
and then we are actually just going to place this onto our actual shoulder. I, I would suggest getting someone to help you do this, like actually put your jacket on and place a shoulder pad where you want it to go. And you will pin that on and then you're actually gonna end up just hot gluing this to the jacket once you're done. So we are gonna go ahead and put the trim on it before we put it onto the actual jacket. And again, we are gluing this trim to the underside of the shoulder pad. So you want it to come out from underneath. You can see in a lot of the inspiration photos that that's how it's done. So you just wanna glue this all the way around this is just some trim from the fabric store or some fringe from the fabric store you can get whatever length you want and again kind of like the cord you're gonna be um, you know putting some tape on this so that it doesn't fray and then just gluing that tape down to the actual shoulder pad So as you can see, we're just gluing this down, getting it um, as secure as possible. And then this is your covered little shoulder pad. We took a kind of rounded object just to make sure that the shoulder kind of kept its round um, shape so that when we glued it, it didn't end up straight and then making the jacket like wear funny. If you want to, you can totally glue this while it's actually on your body, just get someone to help you. Um, but, but we decided just to use this kind of like decorative ball underneath it to keep that rounded shape. So you're literally just gonna glue this and you kind of want it to come up under that lapel, at least on my jacket we wanted it to. It's kind of tucked under there and then it's just glued. And then you're gonna add the rest of your gold trim. We did it along the points of the jacket, which I think was an awesome touch. We almost didn't do this, but I think it really helped make the jacket feel more put together. Um, again, taping the end, putting it down and just clipping it off, really super easy easy. All right, and then to do the little gold loops, which again are not a 100% necessary detail, but I think they really make um, the jacket look a little bit more authentic. So in order to do this, we just measured out a little bit of the gold trim. We tried this a couple different ways and this ended up being the best way to do it. You just wanna glue one end underneath the button, make sure it's really secure, and then you're gonna loop it around another button, leaving it just a little bit looser than you think you do, like a little bit looser so that you don't like, you know, push your shoulders back and kind of bust out of the jacket you want to make sure you still give yourself a little bit of wiggle room but not so much that it's going to fall off so then you're just going to glue the other end back behind that button as well so that you don't have to worry about keeping up with them and you can just have them attached to the actual jacket and then just secure them once you put it on then we're going to go with the same gold cord, which this is actually just a Christmas cord. I think I said that, but it is super easy and very inexpensive. And we're just gonna glue that like around the top of the lapel, again, using a little bit extra, just so it doesn't get too tight. And you can see we only had the tiniest, tiniest bit left over, which was awesome. And that is the jacket completed. All right, and moving on to the makeup section of this video, I decided to go with something a little bit creepier rather than pretty, but you could do whatever you wanted to do. I am using a really heavy duty primer um, so that I can make sure the makeup stays on all day. So I used a setting spray underneath, and then this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. This is not going to budge. This is the most high coverage, long lasting foundation I've ever used. And then because I have this massive zit on my forehead, as you guys saw earlier, um, I did this makeup multiple days in a row and just killed my skin but we are going to go ahead and conceal powder and um, go ahead and bronze I'm bronzing kind of the crap out of my face because we're gonna have such stark contrast to um, my skin tone definitely with the black um, eyes so I wanted to make sure that I contoured and bronzed as like much as possible and you'll see in the cutaways it still really doesn't do much but for this you don't actually need to conceal under your eyes because you're covering everything with the black so I'm just filling in my eyebrows after priming my eyes with the NARS primer and then I'm actually going to take just a like you know a colored shadow that's kind of similar to the black so I went with this gray and I'm just going to kind of sketch out where I want the different points on my makeup to go um, again this came from that inspiration photo if you guys saw that um, earlier I just thought this was kind of joker-ish and kind of jest jester-y um, and kind of clowny at the same time and it just felt really intense and cool so I decided that this was a shape I wanted to go for and then I'm just taking this NYX mousse eyeliner and um, I tried this with face paint and it didn't really work um, so I decided to go with the eyeliner and it worked great I'm using a really small detailed brush from eco tools I ended up actually loving this brush set uh, 
mm, set, not shet. <laughs> um, and I'm going to leave all of this link down below as well. But um, I'm just sketching out the outline. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can really clean it up later slash it kind of looks great if it's kind of messy because it looks almost a little bit creepier. So after that, I'm just going to take another brush from that Eco Tools um, kit that's a little bit bigger and I'm just going to fill in the larger spaces of the eye makeup and then go back in with that little detail brush and get the corners of it. You could go around this with like a liquid liner to make a really crisp line if you really wanted to, but this does take quite a long time. So I decided to not do that. And then you're just going to repeat the same process on the other eye, trying as best as you can to get it even. It Trust me, it's very hard, so just kind of go with the messiness. It makes it a little bit creepier, and you can always, again, add more rather than take away. So just, you know, go back and fix it as you need. And then I also lined my waterline after I set all of this with a black powder. I highly suggest you do this. It's going to help it not smudge and it's also just going to make it a lot smoother and more black and help it not crease on you. So I just used a Revlon one and then lined my waterline with that same gel liner and then I ended up actually putting a red dots all around it and I used a liquid lipstick to do this. It just got cut out of frame. So I did that and then added a little bit of a red glitter on top. Again, this just makes it kind of clown-y and then I'm doing a red liquid lipstick. This is Lime Crime Red Velvet. And then using this NYX Glitter Primer, I'm just gonna put this all over my lips and we are doing a full on glitter lip, y'all. It might feel like you have little shards of glass on your lips, but man, does it look cool. I love it. I just put this NYX Glitter on top. This is just in red. And I just patted this on with another one of those brushes from, um, from, actually this is a BH one, a flat one. And yeah, this is what it ended up looking like. I ended up putting on mascara. You don't really need mascara or lashes unless you really want to. So, because your eyes are so blackened out. But then I just put my hair back in a slick low bun because I felt like this is what you might do underneath the top hat um, and so I just wanted it to be as slicked back as possible. Just used a little bit of hairspray to keep that in place as well as a couple of bobby pins just so that it is as slicked back as possible. If your hair doesn't look good like this, do whatever you want to. This is just how I ended up doing it and this is the finished makeup look. All right, guys, so that is the finished makeup look and the finished entire costume. For the rest of the costume, I just wore a black bodysuit from ASOS underneath, a pair of ASOS shorts, some tights from Target, and then a pair of over-the-knee boots um, that I love that are from Chinese Laundry that I got forever ago. So I don't know if they're still available, but they're amazing and you should buy them. And then I also have the cane or the dancing pole as it's called. And the little mini top hat are both from Spirit Halloween. And that is the entire costume. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you to Tadra Call for the music at the beginning. And um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you very soon and happy Halloween. Halloween.